Yes, this place should serve well enough. Might I have a little space? I need to concentrate. was her soul again? Ah, there you are. Are you all right? <sighs> yes, though I cannot imagine how. What happened? Thou didst invoke the power of flow, which thence did usher thy soul unto the life stream. to save the antidote, and after that... <laughs> I did something exceedingly reckless, for which you will just have to forgive me. <gasps> Master Matoya! Oh, thank the heavens, you're all right. I had nearly given up hope. Please, Renard, dry your tears. What would the others think if they saw you like this? Come now. Did you really think I would go gently into that dark night with so much left undone? So many mysteries left unsolved. <clears throat> Is there aught you wish to say to me? A word of thanks, perhaps? Emmet Selk, the Asian of whom I spoke. Twas he who plucked thee from the life stream. I see. Thank you. Differences notwithstanding, you saved my life, and for that I am grateful. But let us turn our attention to more important matters such as the Katana Ravel. You had better not have explored its depths without me.
Well, Almut and the others should be pleased to see you in such uncharacteristically high spirits. Let us return to Fanoff then, and discuss the coming expedition. The Light Warden is dead. The Blessed's prayers have been answered. Aye, that they have. Her condition yet troubleth thee? It does. Though she shows no immediate signs of corruption, the danger remains. She must be told. Would you describe it to me, Marie Angé? Paint for me a picture with your words. A sea of shimmering stars. Diamonds strewn across a raven gown. Boundless and beautiful. It is an exquisite sight, not unlike that of the source. Calm and gentle and forgiving. I can see it. For however deep the void or wide the expanse, there is no shore so distant as to be beyond the reach of light. Ominous though that may sound, given our present travails. Let us return home. The murals. If I am not mistaken, they predate the Empire. How can you tell? A peculiarity of the paint. Most are made from mineral-based pigments. But whatever was used here is older than anything I have ever seen. According to Almut, this sanctuary was built to preserve the wisdom of the ancients. What events do these murals commemorate, I wonder? Must you always linger after defeating your enemies? 
Navigating these halls on foot is exhausting. Come to lead us to safety, have you? <laughs> I was bored. But how is the hero of the hour? Hmm. Fighting fit, I see. Keep up the good work. You're plotting something. Every hour of every day. But never you mind about that. As I have told you a thousand times before, I like to watch. Nothing more. Well, I would quit this place and I suggest you do the same. There is yet work to be done. Ah, oh, there is a sight to bring a tear to the eye. You recognize these scenes? That I do. Indeed, there was a time when anyone and everyone would. Until one calamitous day when the world was divided across ten and three reflections, sundering the land and all who dwelled upon it. And the worst part? No one could remember it. Not really. Just fragments and fleeting memories of an achingly familiar world. A vision shared of a paradise lost, preserved only in song and scripture and paint. Once upon a time. Yet here we find ourselves again, to look, learn, and remember. Then share with us the stories you know so well. We are listening. Before the great sundering, there was one world. A world that knew naught but peace and prosperity until it was faced with a crisis, unprecedented, terrifying. Civilization found itself perched upon a precipice, staring into oblivion. But through prayer and sacrifice, the will of the star was made manifest. Zodiac was his name, and by his grace was the calamity averted. Zodiac. A savior mighty and magnificent, deserving of reverence and gratitude. One would have thought, yet some thought otherwise. From the fears of these naysayers would rise Hydalin. She who was to serve as his shackles, to bind him and hold him in check. And so they fought, and they fought, and they fought, and in the end, Hydalin was victorious. With all her strength, she smote him, dealing a blow so devastating that it split the very fabric of reality. And thus, Zodiac banished and his being divided. That concludes today's lesson on long forgotten history. Though I imagine your mother would offer a rather contradictory account, as is her woe. I'm sorry, I can only assume I misheard. But it sounded an awful lot like you were implying both Zodiac and Hydaelyn are not gods. But... What? Not gods of the first? Is that what you thought these paintings depicted? Or... 
They are gods after a fashion, yes. But no different from the kind with which you are so intimately acquainted. Formed of faith and prayer, of conviction and devotion. The eldest and most powerful of primals. You have spun quite a tale. Yet you have not explained the role of the Assians in all of this. How is it you are privy to ancient secrets lost to time? <laughs> finally, finally you ask the right question. And shrewd questions warrant honest answers. We Assians know because it is our history, our story. It was we who summoned Zodiac, we natives of that sundered paradise. Now, do you see why we yearn for the great rejoining? people, for all creation to be made whole again. Wouldn't you wish for the same? Ah, you are returned. And none the worse for wear, I see. You needn't worry about us. What became of the Yamoran soldiers, more importantly? They turned tail and fled at the sight of the night sky. The children of the Everlasting Dark have also retreated back to Woven Oath. Try as they might, they could not deny the truth of their own eyes. sunless sea of heaven, full of love and grace, where none need no pain or suffering. In that moment, when the sky's light began to wane, I knew our prayers had been answered. That we were doomed to face oblivion at life's end no longer. When first we met, I harbored certain suspicions about you. Now I see that I was right. You are the bringers of shadow, the warriors of darkness, the saviors for whom we have prayed for so long. I suppose you're not entirely wrong, but we are not worthy of your reverence, nor have we any desire to be worshiped. If you would pray, pray for your children that they may one day know a better world. I will do as you say. But please, let us at least hold a feast to celebrate your victory. You deserve that much. I'm sorry, Runar, but there is still much to be done and scant time in which to do it. We must go. All of us. For we share the same path and the same fate. So be it. I ask only that you hold us in your hearts, as we would hold you in ours. Now, and ever after, by the boundless dark, this I swear. <laughs> <laughs> 